Hello everyone, this is Vatmalata Science Faculty. A leader is the one who knows the way, goes the way and shows the way. Today, in this session, we are going to discuss about the interesting topic about Newton's laws of motion. Newton's law of motion. So here, the Newton's law. We know that the Newton's law was proposed by the great scientist Sir Isaac Newton. Right. We all know about Sir Isaac Newton who wondered about the apple falling from a tree. So, before moving about our topic, let's know about Sir Isaac Newton. So, Isaac Newton was a great scientist who worked in the fields of mathematics and physics. And he has proposed many theories based on gravitation when he was about 23 years old and if you see he has given the laws of motion around the year 1628 newton has proposed the three laws of motion these three laws of motion gives the relationship between the motion of the body and the force acting on the body right this is the small gist about the famous scientist Sir Isaac Newton. So, today in this video, we are going to study about Newton's first law of motion. So, Newton has proposed three laws of motion. Newton's first law of motion, Newton's second law of motion and Newton's third law of motion. Here today in this video, we are going to learn about Newton's first law of motion. So, see here, Newton's first law of motion can also be called as law of inertia. So, what is meant by inertia? We have to know what is meant by inertia, right? So, let's see what is inertia, then we shall move on to our law. Before knowing about the definition, we shall go on through example, right? Just imagine, just take a ball and slide it on the floor. What happens? It starts to move. Am I right? Will it stop? No. How, will, how it will stop? You have to go and apply some force to stop the ball. Am I right? Yes. So you have to apply some force to stop that moving ball. Okay. You leave this one as it. Now consider another one example. You just take a ball and keep it on the table. What happens? Will it move? No. It remains at rest as it is. Am I right? It remains as it is. When the ball will move, you have to apply some force to make the ball move. Am I right? So there are two cases. The first case there is a moving ball. If you want to stop, you have to apply some force. Right. In the second case, you have kept the ball at the rest. And if you want to make the ball to move, you have to apply some force. So if you see, here, in order to make the object move or in order to make the object stop, you have to apply some external force on it. Am I right? Or else, it will be doing its own work. Yes or no? Here the ball, it is moving, it will move on. The ball which is at rest, it remains as it is unless we are giving any force to it. This example is more close to the word inertia. Let's see what is inertia. See, inertia is nothing but the word derived from the Latin. It is derived from the Latin name Inus, I-N-E-R-S, Inus. From the Latin word only, they have derived the word inertia. So, Inus is nothing but idle or lazy. Idle or lazy, both are same meaning. Lazy means sitting simply. Idle also it is the same meaning, the sitting simply. They don't do any work. They will be sitting as it is. 
so what is meant by inertia it is nothing but tendency to do nothing or remain unchanged so tendency to do nothing so they don't do anything they don't do anything or remain unchanged so whatever may be the work it is being assigned it will be moving on doing its work for example the moving ball it moves on unless you are applying some uh, force to stop it it moves on unless you you apply some force it the tendency to do nothing if you are keeping the ball at the rest it won't do anything right it will be staying as it is when you apply some force only it will move right so inertia is nothing but tendency to do nothing or remain unchanged okay so we know what is the meaning for inertia how can we relate this inertia with physics let's see tendency of the body in motion continues to remain in motion moving with uniform velocity and body at rest remains at rest unless a force is acted on it so what does it mean so tendency of the body for example just imagine the ball now you can able to find the example is very much easier to understand this definition okay now recall the example so the tendency of the body in motion the ball is it in motion right so it continues to be in motion right if it is moving on a floor it will be moving with some velocity and body at rest so i said the ball which is at rest it will be at rest it remains at rest the body which is will be which is moving with uniform velocity it remains moving the body which is at rest remains at rest unless a force is acted on it it moves on doing its work when we can change the action of that particular body we have to apply some force right we can change the action of that body by applying some force on it so what is meant by inertia what is the definition the tendency of the body in motion continues to remain in motion moving with uniform velocity and body at rest remains at rest unless a force is acted on it okay so see here we can say that inertia is a quality a body is moving it's a quality of the body a body which is at rest yes it is the one of the quality of the body right we know that all the bodies in the universe are made up of matter inertia is the quality the each and every body has some inertia it has some quality a table it will be in rest yes or no it will be at rest when we are pushing the table to move that time only it will come to the action we can say that it has some inertia so inertia is nothing but the quality where all the objects in the universe are made up of matter and if you see when you are applying some force to move the object the objects with a larger mass what is meant by mass the weight the objects with higher weight will resist the movement am i right if it is very heavy if you are applying some force to move will it move no it resist right if you see the objects with higher mass will resist the motion when compared with the objects with the lower mass right so we can relate that inertia is a measure of mass we are going to apply some force to move that right we are going to apply some force to make the object move and make the object to be in rest so we know what is meant by inertia the tendency of the body in motion continues to remain in motion with uniform velocity and the body at rest 
remains at rest unless a force is acted on it. Now what? Now we know what is inertia, right? So what is the relation between this Newton's first law of motion and law of inertia? Let's see. Every object persists. Persists is nothing but remain. Every object persists to stay in uniform motion in a straight line or in the state of rest unless an external force acts on it. So now you can make it clear. If you read this sentence, this will be more closer to inertia. Am I right? Every object remains to stay in uniform motion in a straight line. If you are making the ball to move, it moves. Right? It will be moving with uniform motion. Every object will be, it remains to move in the uniform motion in a straight line or it remains in the state of rest. If you take a chair or a table, it remains in the rest position. When it will move, unless an external force acts on it. Whenever you are applying some external force only, you can able to make the object move. Alright. So this Newton's first law of motion wholly depends upon the objects at rest and the motion. For example, if the object is in motion, if you want to stop, you have to apply some external force to stop that object. For example, if you want, if the ball is at rest, if the chair is at rest, if you want the chair to move from one place to another, you have to apply some force to move that chair. Yes. So, this first law, this Newton's first law of motion wholly depends upon the external force that you are going to apply on the object. So, Newton's first law of motion states that every object persists to stay in uniform motion in a straight line or in the state of rest unless an external force acts on it. Now, you can able to make it clear what is the relationship between the inertia and the first law of motion, right? So, what we are saying this first law of motion is also called as law of inertia, right? I hope today this session will be very much helpful for you to know about the Newton's first law of motion. Let me visit you in the next video by explaining about Newton's second law. Until it's bye bye and thank you.